Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Sharon Hills joining us here live today. We are back with our life coach, uh, coaching with Sharon from Mill Creek, Utah. Excited to have her back and to talk more about all the work she's doing and helping so many. So first and foremost, how are you? How have you been? I'm doing great. Thanks. <laughs> great. Well, it's good Brilliant. to have you back and tell us yeah, a little bit about, back. you know, who you are and what you do just to start for today. Okay. Yeah. My name is Sharon Hills. Um, I am a life coach that help, I help women who over drink alcohol and who want to change that um, dynamic in their lives. And I came to this work. Uh, it's a pretty long story, but I'll give you a short version. Um, I found alcohol a little later in life in college and thought it was amazing from the very moment I found it. Uh, it helped me be more social and uh, get out of my anxiety and my my social anxiety, especially. Um, and so I fell in love with it and started drinking too much right away. And uh, eventually I knew that I had a problem, but I didn't want to stop because it was still solving a lot of my anxiety, my emotional issues, basically. Um, so I found somebody that drank just as much as I did. And uh, we fell in love and we built a life around alcohol. And um, and after over a decade of drinking every day, uh, that's how it progressed is into the morning and all day long. And uh, after, after some years of that, he got cirrhosis of the liver yeah. and um, he passed away about eight years ago. Mm. And so that really changed my life obviously and yeah. the illusion that I could keep drinking the way I was was dashed and I, I knew that I was on the same path and and would um, die too so I I did a lot of work and a lot of research to figure this thing out and and it's really near and dear to my heart for for those reasons and I I just really am passionate about helping other women get out of this crazy dark cave that it can become. Well, thank you. Um, you know, you're always a pleasure to have here and I appreciate you opening up and sharing all this with us. And how do we find you? Could you tell us the website? Yes. Come find me at www.coachingwithsharone.com. And my name is spelled S-H-U-R-O-N-E. Perfect. And that's Yeah. Well, what did you want to share for us today? I know we've talked a lot about, uh, you know, the work that you're doing and for new time listeners today, I would love to dive into that. And of course, whatever else you, you wanted to share for today's show. Yeah, sure. Um, so most people, when they come to me, they are really nervous and they are scared about this big change. Um, I have a girl that I'm currently working with and she was nervous just to, just to talk to me and, just to um, even begin this process is really scary. And so I just, I just want to tell everybody out there um, to not, don't be afraid. And it's totally normal if you are and uh, really getting past that first step of, of really just being willing to, to think about this is you're on the right track. So um, it's amazing wherever you're at. And um but yeah, this girl that I'm working with right now, she was so nervous. But once she started to do this work, it's kind of like, it's like learning something new for the first time that you mm -hmm. that you feel like you wanted to know your whole life. <laughs> and, um, a lot of the things that I teach and, and help people with, are, we're not taught in school. Um, and so I've been helping her deal with her emotions and name them and feel them. And it's just really opened up her life. And she didn't know that she could do that. Um, and I didn't either. I remember when I first learned that I could feel how I felt and it wouldn't kill me. I guess I thought that. I thought yeah. that my emotions would kill me because it was too much. Um, and so a lot of what I do is, is helping people see that their emotions are here to guide us, kind of like a compass. And they're really not problems and yeah. uh, part of being human mm -hmm. and, and yeah, and how to do that and what it looks like. And, and so, so now she's, she uh, texted me the other day 
<laughs> said that she had processed some anxiety and by herself and she was she was really happy and it so, sounds so funny right like being yeah. all excited about processing anxiety but but I know for for me and for so many people anxiety and depression and those so-called negative emotions really can throw us off and, yeah. and it's understandable that we try to escape them and alcohol is obviously a a way that we do that and so um and then ironically, it makes our problems worse instead of making uh, them better. So. It sure does. It yeah. does. But I love this beautiful smile on your face. And I just can't even imagine a time in the world when you were so down and not smiling. And, and uh, that's it's just good to see that and to know that people can change and you can go yes. through a lot of trauma. And you've been through a lot of trauma. But you can recover, you can heal. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful outcome, obviously. And you're yeah. helping give, you know, so many more of this same outcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been really rewarding and uh, given my life so much meaning, especially after all the things that I went through. Um, I did want to mention that we talked a little last week briefly about AA and uh, I have been involved in that community and I still am. And I think it's a great resource, especially for connecting to other people that are going through the same thing. Uh, but I just wanted to mention that my coaching does not involve 12 steps or anything Alcoholics Anonymous related. It is a separate thing. And uh, I think that we have learned in the past you know, years so many things about our brains and the neuroscience and all of it is so interesting. Um, that I think that is time to up level our version of recovery and the way that we're going about it. And so I'm excited to be at the forefront of that and doing this more thought work and um, this internal work on our own minds. Such a beautiful thing to do. Now, did you ever join Alcohol Anonymous? And yes. it, what's the other one called that's for people with the, the drug addictions? Uh, yes, there's Narcotics Anonymous. Um, it, there, narcotics, yep. Yeah, yep. And Cocaine Anonymous. There's several different groups out there. And they're all really wonderful. Like I was saying, uh, they do offer great, great tools. And I really think that the, the number one thing is the community and the connections with people. Um, because addiction can be really isolating. And... People, if you're anything like me, I kind of just kept doing that and got more and more isolated until I had nobody that I was talking to at all. And so um, that's another reason that I love being here with you on this podcast, talking to people that maybe are too afraid to get out of their um, houses and, and just want to hear that there is a there's hope out there. There is hope. You're not alone. Oh, my goodness. I love hearing that. It's so true. Yes. yes. Yeah, and I am. I look totally different than I did, and I was not smiling, and I was not healthy, and um, and alcohol it took me down to the very, very worst place. Um, and so I love now being um revived and and um, showing up um alive and happy, and my yeah. life is amazing now. And I think that's another big fear that a lot of people have is if I quit drinking or using drugs, my life won't be fun anymore. Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I help clients with that, too. We really talk a lot about all their fears and concerns. You know, that's really what keeps people, holds people back from making big changes is their their fears. And Tell me about some of those people who have changed. What are they doing now for fun? Tell, tell us what happens. They find a new hobby. They find a friend. They find what What exactly? Yeah. Okay. So um, so I actually have a, a hiking group um, that I created here in Utah, and it's a group of women. We go up hiking once a week, and that is has been a really major part of my life. I'm in Utah, so I'm next to mountains. And I get to go explore them all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I just went last weekend and climbed a 12,000 foot uh, peak. It was great. Um, <clears throat> so there are so many things, though, in, in um, not, I don't want to say sobriety, but 
yeah. life after alcohol and drugs. It just really opens up. It was amazing to me, the passions and desires mm-hmm. that I had hidden and like pushed down and told myself that I couldn't do anymore. So um, like a lot of art stuff and I started writing again, writing mm-hmm. poetry. So it's different for all of my clients. They have different interests, but they find them and they get them back. Um, I have one client that started flying again. Wow. Uh, Taking flying lessons, you mean? or Oh, she was a pilot before. Oh, oh, wow. And, and she kind of just like put everything in her life uh-huh. to the side. And, the, and it's almost like when we get so addicted to things, we forget who we are. We forget that we that we have these um, desires and these loves and passions for other things. And, you know, she had written it off and, and thought that like she was, could was too old I think was one of her thoughts or something like that so really we just questioned all of that and she um, is back up there now and um, I really like that example because she's uh, about like 10 years older than I am and she's um, more <laughs> she's more adventurous it's just great um, so yeah I think that our relationships are another area that people really see a huge difference. Um, I have a couple of clients that I'm thinking about right now that didn't think they would get their families back. And they now have their kids back in their lives. And that is a huge deal for, for women. And um, seeing women reconnect with their children, I think, has been one of the the greatest things but even just like relationships in general you know I think like for me I I had kind of pushed my family away and I think a lot of us do that when we're addicted to things and and, in that shame and guilt spiral um and so I was able to repair those relationships and slowly my my parents and my siblings um they trust me again and it took some years, but, and I helped my clients with that too, because sometimes it's difficult when things don't happen right away. You know, we live in a culture and a society that is, is really addicted also to instant gratification. We want stuff now, right away. And um, so we, we coach about the, the things that happen around addiction like that too, like waiting and, and having some patience for that trust to come back. Sometimes we have to do that. But knowing that it can and will, you know, I remember my my little brother, he's a doctor. Hopefully he won't mind me sharing this, but he uh, he told my mom not to get her hopes up and that I probably wouldn't really quit because not very many people do. And statistically, he's right. You know, a lot of people do um, end up relapsing and going back. That's another thing I love about coaching and thought work is it really speaks to the root of the problem which is our our thoughts and our thinking about it about alcohol and um but yeah it took my brother some years and I'm glad he said that because it kept me um I wanted to to prove myself too I guess and um so yeah it just takes what it takes and I I share that story with people and then and then they can you know say okay like maybe it will take I think it, I think I was, I had like six years free from alcohol before my little brother stopped worrying about it. <laughs> Aww. And mm-hmm. maybe he still does. I'm not sure, but he, he doesn't, um, I don't think he, he believes like he did, um, for sure. So, so yeah, it's, it's, um, I think that addiction is something that impacts all of us, whether you're yeah, the- whether you're the addict or the the family members, the friends, the workers, it it it's so it's so vast and it trickles down to so many, you know. And it's ah, oh, it breaks my heart to see this happening to so many people. Look, I have a I'm going to tell you a story. Get mm-hmm. I'll get your take on it since you have experience. Um, my kids are seven and nine, right? They're two little boys. I have older cousins and teenagers, and one of the teenagers started drinking because that's what they do at 16. Not say that's that's what they do, but that's when they start whatever. So my son, we had his seventh and ninth birthday party a few weeks ago. My son, who's nine, okay, nine, he 
grabbed a high noon and one of the adults brought a high noon. I even know what that is, what type of alcohol is in this, this thing, but he took it supposedly, and you know, he did, he admitted it and he went, it went around the block with the neighbors, with the little kids and he took a few sips and then he threw it out. And I obviously to find this out, I was, oh my gosh. I'm like, how could you do that? He was with the older kids. The older kids said, we didn't want to tell you. I'm so sorry. I said, but you can't allow a kid to do that. And you guys were laughing, thinking it's cool. Well, we didn't drink anything. I said, but still, so now my son thinks it's like, okay. And I love that he told me the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just worried. And, and people are like, oh, it's not a big deal. I'm like, but no, but he thinks that's okay. Like he's nine. He shouldn't even be sipping it. I mean, you know, I did give him a, a sip of wine a year or so ago at the dinner table because I said people in other countries do this, try it. He hated it. And I was not going to like it. But the fact that he did that at nine, it, it, it's worrying me, Sharon. And I'm like, yeah. why does he think that's okay? He sees it on TikTok. He sees his cousins. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is very widely used in our society it's everywhere and it's pretty unavoidable. But um, what I do think is happening is there, and I don't, I don't think this is going to be quick by any means, but yeah. I think that there is a trend just like with cigarettes where they used to be really cool and all the kids thought they were cool and they're now not cool because we know they cause cancer and they, we know that they're bad for us. I think alcohol is going in the same direction we really do know that it is a carcinogen that causes cancer and that no amount of it is actually healthy for you. Um, so hopefully your, your son will start hearing that messaging more and more. I'm hoping that the younger generation will hear about alcohol as more of a, a toxin than like a cool thing. But I don't know how how you avoid that because it, like you said, it's everywhere and it's what the, the kids are, you know, it's like kind of like a rite of passage. Um, so I think the best way to deal with alcohol in our society where it's everywhere is to just have an open conversation and just to start talking about it and, and also to start talking about emotions because I think that that's really where it becomes a problem yeah. when people start using it to escape and to, to get out of how they're feeling. Um, and for a lot of us, we never take it to that level and so it doesn't become a real issue. Um, so I would just watch and, and see what happens with him and, and, uh, not worry about it. <laughs> Got it. All right. Thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, we still have five minutes left and what else do you think is important? Do you want to talk about your coaching process? Do you want to give us other examples of, you know, anything in particular that's going to help someone out there who, again, if you are just tuning in, let me remind you, coachingwithsharone.com. It's S-H-U-R-O-N-E.com. And again, she's here helping so many, um, you know, and those that, of course, who have a problem with drinking, who've drank, who need help. She had her own, you know, story. And I just, it's so sad to hear, but at the same time, she's changed her life, turned her life around. And she's helping so many of the people out there who may be following in her footsteps, who have walked in her shoes. And especially for women out there, you know, if you're interested in changing the way you drink, Hey, reach out, right? Because you are the one that could show them how you also have some free webinars on the website too. Yep. I'm doing one today at two o'clock. Ah time yeah so just in a few hours if you want to go head to my website and sign up for that um i i uh let's see what else can i share um, oh my goodness all right hold tell me tell me what happens at this webinar tell, tell give me some insight to what we can expect okay so i just i'm going to talk about um really the the core issues that we have with our drinking is our, our thoughts about alcohol and how to look at what our thoughts are currently and how mm -hmm. they might be promoting the over drinking and uh, what to do about that because that really is the root of the the problem is what we're thinking about our drinking um if you're thinking this is fun and it sounds like a good idea with friends yeah. you're probably not in that danger zone. But if you're thinking this mm -hmm. makes my life better and I don't like the way I feel, so I'm going to drink to escape it. Yeah. Then that is where people find, get into trouble. And if you're, if your thoughts are along those lines about alcohol, uh, come talk to me, please. I, I love helping women 
to to change this dynamic with alcohol and to get out of the the dark cave. Um, and it is possible. Anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, and I, I know it's scary, and that's okay. And don't be scared. It's it's all right. Hmm. Oh, gosh. And for those out there that you know, well, you know, you're in Utah. Do you do in person, or is it all really Zoom at this point? It is. I do Zoom Zoom calls with people. Um, I have a, a few friends that I coach in person, but really it's just over Zoom. Okay. That way I can reach whoever wants to coach. I was going to say, do people, I feel it'd be, it's a little more less invasive. I feel like less stress, less anxiety about having to go, yeah. go somewhere, see someone in person. It makes me a little yeah. nervous. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like you, you're probably serving a lot more people this way. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully so. You can be in the comfort of your own home and um, hop on and off. I'm also starting a podcast so that people can hear this information and not have to go anywhere and not even have to talk to me and just uh, get this great new information that's coming out about addiction that's just really exciting. Oh, I love it. Any advice to someone out there today that uh, may be listening and, you know, debating picking up that drink today? Yeah, you don't have to. <sighs> you don't have to do it. And if you do, it doesn't matter either. You're you're still a, a wonderful human being. And ah. I think that we shame and guilt ourselves far too much about this issue. And um, it's totally understandable if you yeah. have a, a addiction problem. It's completely normal in the society where we're surrounded by instant gratification. Yeah. Aww. Well, thank you so much, Sharon. Remind us again how we can contact you, please. Thank you so yes. much. Yes, please visit my website, www.coachingwithsharone.com, uh, Sharone, S-H-U-R-O-N-E, and, or uh, email me, Sharone at, Sharone Hills, at coachingwithsharone at gmail.com is my email. And yeah, you can get a hold of me there. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Always a pleasure having you here. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.